Hello everyone. So today we'll be building a simple chart designing system where I'll be showing you the functionality for batch module, separate module, and clone module from basic process panel, as well as I'll be showing you how to use uh, label and go to label modules. So let's uh, start this video. Uh, I would request all of you to pause the video for uh, some times and read the scenario first. Then it will be easier for you to follow. I'll just zoom out my word a little bit. And then you can, I, I hope you can read it from this font size. All right. So here we are trying to make a short designing, basically ma making or designing process. Suppose the production orders for the shard arrives to a shard manufacturing facility according to a exponentially distributed interarrival time with a mean of one hour. There are two basic shard designs, shard design A and B. For some reason, design B is more popular than design A, so that when an order arrives about 70% of the time, it is for design B. In addition, there are two different order sizes for the shards, either three or five. There are 25% chance that order will be for a size of five orders and set risk or 75% of the chance that the order will be for order size of three. Each of these shirts must be individually made to the customer's order design specification. All right, so let's go ahead and start arena first and then we will like go back and forth between arena and this uh, word file to read the scenario. So I'll go to my search bar and I'll open arena. Okay. I'll first go ahead to file section and save this model. You can save it wherever you want. I will save it inside my online video folder and I'll name it chart making process. Okay. And then I'll go to view, I'll get the grid lines. All right. So I'll just take off my advanced transfer and advanced process panel for now. I'll just have basic process and the others. First thing first, we have to create the entities here. So what entity is arriving to our model? Orders. So I'll get a create module first. All right, double click on it and we will name this module as create order arrivals and entity type will be orders. Okay. And then it's randomly exponentially distributed, the interarrival time, one per hour. Entities per arrival is one, infinite, and first creation will be at zero minutes, zero hours, as we haven't specified anything here. Okay, next, what we need. We have a couple of assignments that we need to give to the incoming orders. So just think about it. In Arena, we do it in the reverse direction. Let's say you are collecting data for your project. So what happens? You start observing the system and then you record the arrival time of entities, what kind of entity it is, or what is the processing time, what is the transfer time, and so on. And based on those data, we will come back and then create our probability distribution. However, the entities, the virtual entities that is being created by Arena for us, it doesn't know what type it is, what order size it will have, or what would be its due date. So we have to use those probability distribution that we are creating using the input data and let our virtual entities know, okay, so you have been created, this is your name, this is your order num number, or this is your creation time, this is your processing time in process ABCD, wherever we are sending them. So for doing that, we would require a sign module. Okay, so I'll get a sign module first and place it right after this. Next, instead of, um, 
editing this assign module, we will go to attribute. And I'll go back to the scenario. So there are two kinds of things that this order needs to know. What are those two kinds of things? What kind of design this order is for? Is it for design A or is it for design B? Next, what would be the order size for the incoming order? So these are the two attributes we need to define for our virtual entities. And why we are defining it through attributes, not variables, because these things are very particular features that the entity does possess in real life or even in the virtual arena model. This is not something related to the whole system. Something, any kind of variable that defines the whole system, let's say work in process, average queue waiting time, uh, time average queue waiting time for entities and anything and everything that defines the system is will be defined using variables. And anything that defines a feature, any kind of variable, these attributes are basically also one kind of variable, but they define features of entities. So that's why this, whether it's design A or B, the system, it's a variable that is unique to entities, not system. System will have a count that, okay, entity is, uh, entity one is created and it's for design A. So maybe in a um, tally uh, statistics, it will increase uh, the counter, sorry, it will, um, take in the arrival time or service start time and so those kind of uh, attributes for this entity. But the data structure that we'll use for this will be attributes, not variables. I know it's a little confusing in the beginning. However, I would highly suggest you to read Simulation with Arena textbook because it's very hard to explain these things in a video. But if you read the book, it will be very easy to understand, hopefully. All right. Next, I'll go back to Arena module. I'll, I have opened Attribute Data module. I'll double click here and I'll create my first attribute. I'll name it My Order or let's say My Design Spec. That means, what is my design specification? Uh, am I here for design type A or am I here for design type B? Okay. Another attribute would be my order size. Okay. Why I put my? Because it's easier to distinguish attributes from variables. Some other um, simulation analyst uses V in front of all the variable names so that when you will have a very large model you won't get lost like is it an attribute is it a variable is it an expression or something like that what kind of data structure it is so if you use my we're assigning things to our entities so entities will get created and then it will know its own feature so I'll think myself as an entity. So I'll get into the system and then I'll know, okay, what is my design spec? What is my order size? That's why I usually put my in front of the name of attributes. Okay, we won't initialize any value here. We'll go back to assign module and then we'll name this assign module as assign order types and size. I'll click add and then I'll select attribute. Name of the attribute would be, let's say my design spec. Okay. So around 70% of the order is for type B and 30% for type A. So I'll go to build expression and then over here, I'll go to random distribution. Then I'll select discrete probability. Okay. So over here, the function is written in terms of cumulative probability. So the first thing we will input here is probability. And the second thing would be the value for which we are counting the probability for. 
So let's say design A is represented as one and design B is represented as two. So 30% of the arriving entity will be here for design one. Entity means orders. And the rest will be for design two. So it's one here instead of 0 0.7 because it's a cumulative function. Just keep that in mind. One more thing, instead of one and two, as the values, we can define design, we can like input text here or string um, strings here. However, when we will be referencing it in the separate module, it's always better to use a number as a value. That's why we are using number, but you are welcome to use text and see what happens later on. It depends on what you are modeling, how you are modeling, and why you are modeling. Okay. Next, I'll click OK. Another assignment we will be doing will be also for an attribute. It's called my order size. And I'll do the same, but instead of going to build expression, I'll just type DISC, which means discrete probability. And then I will input the um, probability first for order size of five, uh, order size of three. So I'll go back here for a moment, quick moment, okay. There is a 25% chance that the order will be for size five and 75% of chance before three. So let's, let's just put 0 0.75 and three. Three is the value here. And one, sorry, not 11, one and five, like this. Think for a minute what we did. So around 70%, around 75% of the incoming order will be for an order size of three. And around 25% of the order will be arriving for a batch size of five. So that's what we have specified here. So in the value, we have written three. Uh, instead of like one, two that we usually do. Why? Because we have specified the order size here, not type. That's why we have used three and five. Okay. We could also use over here like three, four, five, six, something like that, but we'll be using separate module and where we will need the exact value of the order size. That's why we have used value of exact value of three and five for the batches. And one more thing, each order will be for either design A or design B. Whatever order size it will have, it can't have a mixture of both orders. Like an order can come for a batch size of three where it will need two design A shirts and one design B shirts or vice versa or whatever. It will be unique, like okay, the order is for design A and I, the order requires five shirts designed as design A or five shirts, three shirts designed as design B or something like that. Okay, I'll click okay next. Next, what we will do is we'll go ahead and get our separate module. I'll add the input of the separate with the output of the assigned module. Why we are doing this? I'll go back to Word. So here, what will happen is that the time to make a chart is uniformly distributed and blah, 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 there are two orders and so on. So there will be two processes that will be concurrently going on. So appropriate number of uh, so let's see over here. Meanwhile, so shard will be designed in one area after the order arrival the, and they will have the processing time, designing time and so on, how many workers. And in another area for individual orders, a box will be created. See over here. Meanwhile, I'll just bold this word. Meanwhile, the paperwork for the order is processed and a customized packaging letter and a box is prepared to hold the order to take another, and it takes another worker and blah, blah, blah. So two 
processes will be going at the same time after our order arrives. And they, both of these processes will be using different stuffs. We will look at that. But keep in mind, we have seen parallel processes, right? That entities is getting in, depending on the queue size or whatever, they're going to different process areas. Or we have seen series order type. But over here, concurrently or parallelly, two things will happen for the same arriving entity. Okay, so I'll go back to Arena. I'll double click on separate module. I'll name it separate uh, order for chart design and packaging. Okay. Type would be duplicate original. We haven't talked about cost so far, so we'll just say percentage cost to duplicate will be zero. Okay. Number of duplicates. So I'll go to build expression and over here, I'll go to my attribute and I'll get the value of my design size. So depending what is the design size, sorry, what is the order size of an order, number of duplicates will be created. So if the arriving order is for design three, three entities will pass through this module. If it's for five order, five entities will pass through this module. Okay. Why? Because we have initialized the values for my order size as three and five. Go back to assign and check it. Okay. I'll click okay. I'll click okay. Next, I'll just zoom in it a little bit so I can show you the output side. So each of the order will come in and then through the original output, only one entity will pass to a different area. And through the duplicate output, three or five entities will pass to the chart making area, chart designing area. Okay. So let's grab a box. So I'll grab a box and I'll paste it here. And then by default, it was wide, whatever. And then I'll, I'll name this area as packaging unit and I'll paste it here. So in this part of the factory, what will happen for each order, a package and a letter will be drafted by a staff. And I'll just select both of this control and then select and paste it over here. And in this area, what will happen? Sorry, I'll, I need to unselect first and then I can reselect the text again. Um, chart design unit. So this area, chart designing will go on. Fine. So let's grab two processes. I'll paste one process here and then I'll paste another process here. Okay, that automatic connection. So let's edit the chart design area first. So this process will be for chart designing. Designing process. Okay. Action would be seize delay release because charts will be seizing a resource to get designed before dispatching to another area. Okay, so over here in resource name, I'll go back here for some times. So the time to make a chart or either design is uniformly distributed, not make, let's just say design. Okay. So over here, each of, let's just read this last part first. Each of these charts must be individually handmade to customer's order design specification. Okay. So the time to design those charts is uniformly distributed with a range of 15 and 25 minutes. There, and irrespective of the design, there are currently two workers who are set up to either design chart A or B on the charts. When an order arrives to the facility, its design type and 
A and B is determined and the order size is determined. So we have already determined that using the assigned module. And then appropriate number of cut pieces for the shard is sent to the shard maker with a note pinned to the shard indicating the customer order, its basic design and packet size for the order. Okay, so each of the incoming order will have its number. It will have its design type and it will have its packaging size. All right. So if I need to put one more attribute, I'll do that later, but let's go ahead and edit the chart making process, chart designing process first. So there'll be two workers and the design time is uniformly distributed between 15 and 25 minutes. So I'll go back here. I'll just write shark making workers. I'll name that resource. You need to see the release will be still one because it's like one-to-one -one mapping between worker and between shark design and worker. And then the delay type is uniform between minutes and minimum is 15, max is 25. And then I'll click OK. Next, so each of the arriving shard that will come out of this duplicate module or the original module need to have its order number. So how we can assign that? Let's go to assign. Let's go to the first one and click add. We'll click attribute and then what we will do is that we can do it in two ways. Let me show you both. So an attribute will name it my order number, okay? Next, in the value section, I'll go to build expression. And then instead of going to basic process variable, we will go to entity related variable, list of variables, which Arena creates by itself to keep a track of the system. So whatever we define as attribute and variable by ourselves is user defined variable or attributes or expression. Some of the things Arena creates, some of the variables and attributes Arena create will be available in this section of the expression builder. So it creates some attribute called my entity number, my serial number, my entity type, entity picture, and so on. So what is the difference between entity number and serial number? So if you have you are if you are having duplicate entities in your system, always go ahead and use entity serial number instead of entity number. Why? I'll suggest you to read the text or maybe I'll define it in another video. So you can, let's just select entity serial number first and click OK. So it will have a unique number for each of the arriving entities. OK. So we can do this using an attribute or to get the value of this attribute, we can create a variable. Let's go ahead and create a variable and name this variable as my order number. All right. And then I'll select this variable, my order number. And in the value, new value, I'll just select plus one. So the first entity will have, a, or, so we need, okay. So we will initialize the value of my order number variable to one from the variable data module. So the first entity will have its value of my order number as one. The second one will be incremented by one to two. The third order will have my order number as three and so on. So we can use variable to do the same thing because we won't be decrementing it at the end. So using a variable can does also work, but actually we are using a variable to get, to get an assignment for an attribute. So you can play around your system, but for now, for our ease, let's just use variable for now. I'll click OK, I'll click OK. Then I'll go back to my variable data module. In the initializing value, instead of zero, I'll just write one. So the first order will have a my order number of one and so on. Okay, I'll save my file first before it gets lost. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and uh, edit my packaging process. 
So let's select cease delay release. I'll go back to the verbiage. So a customized packaging letter and a box is prepared. And to perform this task, a packager is assigned and it takes uniformly eight to 10 minutes to do the packaging. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go here. Let's just name the resource as packager and then delay type as uniform units minutes. So it takes around eight to 10 minutes, I guess. Okay. So we have all, both of our processes created. Next, I'll connect the output of this original uh, output of this original end for the separate module with the input of the packaging unit, pro packaging unit process and output of the duplicate module to the shard designing process. In order to visualize it better, we will assign entity picture to see how many duplicates is coming out from this separate module. So let's go ahead and get an assign module. This is just for visualization. We don't need it for our logics that we are inputting in our model. Let's say in the first assignment, the order's entity picture will be yellow ball, for example. Or let's just, sorry, let's just get, um, report where is report usually it's by default report now i can't find okay i got the report next assign so what we'll be assigning assign a picture for shards usually white shirts will be arriving however we'll be using a different colored ball so that we can better visualize let's let's get green ball okay and then we'll leave it there. Okay. Next, we'll go back to the scenario and then try to see what will happen after the shirts are made or designed and the package is being made. Let's go ahead and see here. So after the packaging is made, it waits prior to final inspection for the shard associated with the order. After the shards are combined with packaging, they are inspected by the quality inspector in the facility and the inspection time is blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's go back to Arena and then let's get a batch module. I'll slowly explain like why we need this batch. I'll put it after it. I'll connect the end. So the first batch will be where the shards after getting designed for a particular order will be put together before they are being sent to be put inside the package that is built in through the packaging process. So we'll name this batching as batch based on order number. Okay, do you want them as a permanent batch or do you want them as temporary? So if you need to like split the batches later on using a separate module, then you, will, you should select temporary as your type. But for us, after they're put together, they will be put inside the package and quality inspector will be seeing them as a batch instead of an entity. They, like he, he or she will go over one by one. However, they're not split it apart. So for this simple model, we'll select permanent. Batch size. So how many batches, how many shards will be put together? It will depend on what? It will depend on an attribute. The attribute name is my order size. So if it's for three, then three shards will be put together. Save last criterion. For us, we can select first or last. Both are same. That means the entity that will be coming out of this batch module will pause the attributes for the last, en last entity that entered to get batched. 
for us, let's just select last. Rule, my by attribute, why? Because each of these chart will have its order number or size and design and blah, blah, blah. So based on the order number, each chart has the batching will be done. That's why we will select the attribute, uh, the okay. All right, let's just, okay, let's just select attribute. We need to do one more thing before we are done. Let's go back to the first assign module. So over here, we have created a variable called my order number. However, we need to reassign it to an attribute before this can be used in our batch module. Sorry about that. So instead of my, I'll just put V order number and then V order number here. And then I'll go, I'll select my design spec. And then instead of variable, I'll create an attribute called my order number. And then in the value, I'll go to build expression, variable current number for my, not my order number. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So V order number. Okay. Click OK. So V order number is a variable which will be incremented as order gets into the system and as orders arrive into the system. But my order number is an attribute which will which will get the assignment of V order number as its new value for individual orders. I'll click OK, I'll click OK. And then in batch, so see, this happens, like people forget, but you can always come back and edit your model later. Okay, so my order number will be selected here, and then I'll click OK. So next, we'll get one more batch module. Where's batch? Okay, here is batch, I'll put here. I'll connect the output of the process module here, and then I'll connect the output of this batch module with the input of the second batch module. What will be batched here? The batch charts through this batch module will be put together with the package that will be built for this order number through the packaging process. So I'll double click on this batch. We will name it batch charts with package. And this will be permanent too. Batch size is two because batch of shard and batch of, uh, sorry, batch of shard and a package is coming together. So there are two different uh, things that are put together through this batch module. Rule will be again by attribute and the attribute would be my order number. So for each of the order, there is a customized letter that the packager creates and then he, he or she creates the box. So based on my order number, the batch shirt will be put inside the package. Okay, I'll click okay then. So that's, so let's see what has been done so far in the process. So order is created here. Then it's getting the assignment of order number, design specification, order size, and then picture as well. Next, it's entering the separate module. Why? Because parallelly, two things will be done on this order. A package will be created in the processing area and charts will be sent to the chart designing process Charts will be sent to the shard designing process to get the design on it. And then they'll be batched and then the package and shard will be batched together. Lastly, there will be a area for inspection. So I'll just copy this box and I'll paste it here. So double click here. We'll say final inspection unit. 
So it's a process, we'll get the process here. And then we'll get a dispose. Let's go to the word file one more time. So finally, what will happen is that a quality inspector will inspect the package and the time is triangularly distributed with, uh, among 5, 10 and 15 minutes and the box package is sent to the shipping area. So the dispose, let's just name the dispose as sent to shipping. And the process as pro, uh, inspection process. So there is a separate person who is doing this and that person is named, that resource is named as quality, quality inspector. And the time is strangularly distributed with a mean of five, most likely of 10 minutes and max of 15 minutes. Okay, so what we will do is that we'll connect the output of this batch module, sorry, the output of this batch module with the input of the inspection module. So after everything is done on this side, then packages are being sent to a different area, inspection area. So for better visualization, let's get one more assign. Let's get one more assign here, and then we will assign a picture for a box after it is batched together and finally sent to the inspection process. So we'll just name assign picture for boxes. Box. And then entity picture will be for a box. Okay. So let's go ahead and see what should be our run setup. So the facility is running for how long? Okay, develop the model and run it for eight hours and make sure WIP in the system is zero, okay? Average cycle time for design A and design B separately. Okay, we'll do that later. Let's go ahead and save it first. Let's go to run. Let's just title this project as chart making process model. Analyst would be arena learners. Rep and then we will we'll require to collect entity statistics, resource statistics and queue, which are by default selected. So let's go ahead and select minutes, okay and then run would be for eight hours. But there is one more additional condition that's to be met, that there shouldn't be any working process entity before the system shuts down. In that case, we will need to use terminating condition. All right, so instead of writing replication length to eight hours, we will type in T now, which is a built-in variable in arena which takes the current simulation time and we'll write it like so our base time unit is a minute so eight hours converted to minute is how much eight times 60 so it's for 480 minutes okay so we'll click that next we have one more thing to do so in the assignment we will assign one more variable like we did for others model, for other models. So we'll name it total WIP, all right? And then we'll select it one. So when the first order will come, the counter will get incremented by one. And when the order departs the system, so before it's being sent to the shipping unit, I'll just enlarge this box a little bit. Before it's sent to the uh, inspection unit, the counter or the variable called total WIP will be reduced by one. So I'll get this up and then we we'll name it decrement total WIP. And in the assignment, 
we'll do assignment for total WIP and then we will decrement it by one. So before our order leaves the system, the counter will be decremented by one. Once it arrives, it will be incremented by one and so on. So let's go back to our run parameter. So over here, we have the terminating condition that the time should be at least equal to or greater than 480 minutes. And then we have one more condition that the variable total WIP should be zero. So just put zero. So when both of these conditions are met, simulation run will cease. Okay, you might have a thing coming to your mind. So why um, we haven't used the replication length, let's say eight hours and inside the terminating condition, we just put total WIP should be zero. Because what if you have, let's say if you put here 10, okay? Next, the simulation runs and everything goes on. So exactly after let's say 8.25 hours, there is no working process inside the model. Then the model will stop running. It won't go up until 10 hours. So whichever condition, either the replication length or the terminating condition, whichever condition is met fast, simulation model will run up to that. So it won't go to the, it won't like it won't run up until one it it will to be um sorry about that to be more clear like if you have two conditions here one replication length and one in terminating condition so the first one to be met will be followed so if 10 hours is less than the time it requires to meet this terminating condition let's say for meeting this terminating condition it will take 11.2 hours for example however our replication length is 10 hours so the simulation will stop exactly at 10 hours it won't go up until 11.2 hours to make sure that there is no working process in our system so that's why it's always convenient to use one of it so i'll just write infine it back in the replication length and then we'll have this terminating condition to run on but if you have such a scenario where it's defined like that that you don't know when to terminate but you have an approximate idea then you can use both of them and whatever reaches first the model will cease okay let's go ahead and click okay i'll hit save and then i'll run the model okay so when i tried to run it off the record there was an error that generated let me run it one more time it said the model name must be unique let's go ahead and hit find so we have created an attribute called my order number but in variable we also have a variable created my order number because of my confusion that i've made in the beginning all right so let's go ahead and just delete this variable because we have used v order number to track in the to assign the order number to each specific uh, entities. But in the initial value, just we did for my order number before, we'll just initialize it to one. Okay, so if we have that, let's go ahead and hit save. Why I did, you can come back to this assign module and check it by yourself. Let's go ahead and hit run. I hope this runs this time. Okay, it's initializing and then we have one more error. Okay, the variable name has been used that hasn't been defined. Okay, let's stop the run. Let's go inside the separate module and then my order size. This thing looks fine. Let's go to build expression. Let's go to attribute value, my order size and click okay. Go ahead and hit save. What does it say? I just want to see the error one more time. So we'll double click here and over here. Okay, so there is a small double space between and and packaging words. 
So I think that's what creating this problem. Let's just take one blank of one space off. And let's go ahead and try to run the model. Yeah, it ran. So see, even if you have like two spaces while you are naming your module, it might create some problem while you are trying to run your model. So make sure you just have single space between all the words that you have used to define the name of the module. And it's always better to use no space while you are naming your variable and or your attribute or expression. All right, let's go ahead and hit yes. And then let's see how many shirts were produced and all stuff. So only six of them went out the whole time. Why? It might look very lace. However, the interval time is one hour. So we are running it merely for eight hours and it's exponentially distributed. So it doesn't mean that exactly constantly after one hour, each hour, our order will arrive. Okay, that's one thing. And next thing I wanted to show is that I'll hit go and then I'll just check when the simulation will end. So we said that it should end. I'll hit no, I'll go back to run. So we said it should end if the current simulation time is greater than or equals to 480 minutes. However, the next condition was that the total WIP should also be zero. So in order to meet this two, the simulation ran for 531.8, let's say four minutes approximately. So that's what I wanted to show in this model. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And let's go ahead and stop the run. OK. The next thing that has been asked in this scenario is to calculate the average cycle time for design A and design B shirts. How we can do that? So for calculating average cycle time, we will go back to the assign module. And before we assign any kind of the variable of all these variables and attributes, we will create an attribute called my arrival time. It will track the arrival time or the entity creation time for each orders. So we will just type in T now. Okay, so we have tracked the arrival time for each orders. And then before it's being sent to the shipping unit, we need to collect the data of the departure time. So how we can do that? So I'll go to, okay, I need my advanced process panel. So I'll just add that template here. And over here, I'll go to statistics. Next, I'll click here to add a statistics. And then I'll add a statistics called record. Uh, you know what, let's do it in the other way. I'll just hit delete. And then I'll go ahead and add statistics toolbar directly. So here I have tally. So I'll go ahead and create two tallies. The first tally would say record design A, de record design A system time. And then the other one would be called as record design B system time. Okay, next, as we haven't separated these two flows of entities in our model, let's go ahead and create a set of tallies and then collect the statistics of cycle time or system time using a set tally. So let's go to basic process and in over there we'll select set as our data module and then we'll create a set called system time tally set. Okay, system time tally set. And what kind of things we're making a set of here? Tally. And then we have to add the members. So the first tally will be record design A system time tally. And the next one would be design B system time tally. So create your tally first or create your research 
resources first or entity pictures first and then come here to create the sets because you have to add the member names here one by one i'll click ok next i'll get a record module and then i'll put it here and then i'll connect the output of the decrement total wip assign and the input of this record i'll name this record as record system time for design a and b okay and then i'll go ahead and then the type would be let's select expression for now okay so the expression would be t now minus my arrival time so when the entity was created this attribute called my arrival time ticked the current simulation time as its time for creation and t now so when the entity is leaving the system there will be a different t now because all of of all this process that has gone through right so the departure time will be the current simulation time and my the entity entity creation time would be whatever that has been saved inside my arrival attribute arrival time attribute and then we want to record this in set and then we have created a set called system time tally set index would be what index would be my design spec right so there are two sets in our tally set the first row so index set means like where to put this number should i put this number inside the tally that is in row one or inside the tally that is in row two it will depend based on the order specification for the design that's what the verbiage said that's why we use this index set let's say if it was based on the order size then over here we should have selected my order size but still we would have two tallies because there are merely just two order sizes either the order is for three bad three shirts or they're for five shirts but let's just select my design specification okay i'll go ahead and save the file and then i'll run it it ran for the same amount of time but we have defined a user specified statistics to be reported what is that statistics oh uh, we should have two just just give me a second set and then did we refer the same one no my design specification and in here my design spec is either one or two okay. we should have two tallies here so from the report we can see that only one tally has been reported so let's do one more thing let's animate the attribute let's go to build expression let's get attribute let's get the value for my design spec and see whether it ever changes to one from two okay let's go ahead and let's run it a little slower this time and let's see if there is something that is going wrong with the system all right let's go ahead and hit run and okay so the first order is of type 2 and then the next order is also of type 2 let's just first it a little bit and then other one is type two the other one is type two yes that's what happened so all of the order that arrived are basically design are were here for design type b so that might happen because we have used a probability distribution to define my design spec and there's just 30 percent chance that the order is for design type a and 70 percent chance it's for design type b and the inter-arrival time is really long one hour 
So only six order went out, six order came in, and all of them were for time P. That's why we don't have a tally recorded for design type A. So if it's a zero, then Arena doesn't report that tally in the user specified uh, section. So that's why we just have one tally. And the average system time for design type B charts were 137.7 minutes. And this is not for making a shirt, designing a shirt, or creating a package. This is for all the processes that went through for just one order. All right, so that concludes this tutorial. And instead of uh, using the clone module in this tutorial, I'll be showing it in another video because I think that will make the things a little bit more easier to explain and understand. Thank you all for listening.